Hi, I'm Ms. Haley with the Huntsville Madison County Public Library. And for today's STEM activity, I'm going to show you how to make citrus volcanoes. This is a really simple project that involves baking soda and acid reactions, except instead of using vinegar, we're going to be using citrus. For this activity, you will need an adult who can handle a knife because we do need a sharp knife so that we can cut into our citrus fruit. You will also need some baking soda. Make sure your baking soda is fresh. Check the date on there. I had to get a new box because my old box was dated for 2019, so I'd had that box for a while. Um, and then you need some citrus. So I have just an assortment, and this is because we are testing. This is not just a project, it's an experiment. We don't know the outcome. We will be testing today which citrus fruit has the best reaction with baking soda. So we're gonna test which one, typically that means it's more acidic, but we're gonna test which one gets the biggest reaction out of baking soda. So I have a grapefruit, which I don't know if this is ripe or not, but I have a grapefruit. I have a lemon, I have a clementine, I have a lime, and I have a regular orange. So this is navel orange here. And then I have a little plastic container to contain my reactions. So it's important when you do this experiment that you have a place that can get messy. So if you're doing it um, on a table, make sure you lay some stuff down. Make sure you have a container because this is going to overflow. There's going to be liquid and it's gonna be a sticky mess because fruit juice has some sugar in it. So it will leave a sticky mess if you are just doing it. You don't wanna just do it on your table. You wanna be have a container. You could also do this in the sink. The kitchen sink makes a good place to do this. So we're gonna leave my container here. I have poured some baking soda into a cup here and I have also a tablespoon measure. This is so that we can get the same amount for each of our citrus fruits. Um, obviously, each citrus fruit is gonna differ in terms of the amount of juice they produce because they are each different sizes. So my lime is my smallest, my grapefruit is my biggest. So if we want to make a conjecture, if we want to make a hypothesis, I'm going to hypothesize that the grapefruit will have a bigger reaction because there's more juice but I could be wrong, it might have more juice, but it might not be as acidic as say the lemon or the lime. So we're gonna find that out today. I'm gonna put my tablespoon in my cup of baking soda. You guys can't really see that, it's off camera, but that's okay. So we are going to start with our lime and I'm, I'm gonna just do this experiment. You guys are gonna have to help me decide which one had the biggest reaction. So. To start out with, you wanna take your fruit and we're not gonna do anything really to, to the outside of it. We're gonna start squishing it. So we're gonna squish it in our hand. We don't wanna break it. We don't wanna break into the, the, the lime just yet or, or hurt the skin, but we're gonna start squishing it. You can move that out of the way for a second. You can roll it back and forth with a little bit of pressure on the table. And what we are doing is we're kind of breaking up the insides we're getting it nice and juicy in there. We'll use our knife as well to do that. You could also use a spoon. I'm at the library and I do not have a spoon handy. So we're gonna squish it up. Squish, squish, squish. This can take a while. You want it to feel kind of mushy when you're done. Oops, I tore my paper. Normally when we drop fruit, we get upset because we've bruised it, we've hurt the insides, but in this case we want, we want those insides to be mushy. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the top of it off and see how it best sits down. Okay, so it sits down really good on this side, so I'm going to cut off this top piece. And I'm just going to cut it off, actually I'm going to lay it down and don't cut towards yourself, that's bad cutting. I'm just showing you bad cutting. So I'm just going to cut into it cut this top off and then we're going to just poke our knife down in here. This didn't really would be better for this. 
You know what? I'm going to pause my video and see if I can wrestle up a spoon somewhere in this library. Okay, I had a bit of a hunt and I did find some spoons. I have a plastic one and I have this really big one. So we're going to see what works. We're going to dig in here with our spoon. And I'm trying to break up the fruit, but and kind of scoop it away from the sides a little bit, but to leave as much of the juice in there as I possibly can. If a little runs out, that's fine. But we really want to dig around here. And this is why it's good to have an adult. This is kind of hard. This takes a little bit of strength. easier on the bigger fruit. Maybe I should have started and shown you guys on a bigger fruit, but I wanted to go by size. So I'm definitely spilling. You guys can see the little pool right here building up. That's okay. You might try to spoon a little up, but that won't really work for the other ones because they'll be mixing their juices and we want to be as pure as we can. Alright, I'm going to try to spoon some of that back in there. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's okay. We will leave our lime right there. And I'm going to fast forward for a minute and do the rest of my fruit. Alright, so while I'm doing this, you guys do the rest of your fruit and we will be back in a second to test our lemon, lime, and citrus volcanoes. Okay. Okay, I have broken up my citrus and juiced it a little bit. You could also do this just juicing it into a cup, but I think it's just more fun to do it, um, to do it with all the citrus like this. So we're going to arrange our citrus carefully back in my little container here. I kind of want them side by side when I do this. And I'll turn it so you guys can see it better. And citrus is really pretty. That's one fun thing when you cut it and you section it. You see how pretty it is and how many different colors. Like the sky, you can really see all the little cells, little sections in a grapefruit. And the lemon was cool because I wound up cutting the lemon sideways instead of the normal way that we cut citrus fruit. And so you see the segments in kind of a different way, which was fun. So I'm going to turn, okay, so all our citrus is in view, and we're going to make some observations before we do any baking soda. So as I was cutting my fruit, as I was kind of scooping it up and getting it juicy in there, I noticed a few things. The lime had a lot of juice, but it was hard to keep it in there, so I'm not sure how good our lime is going to be. The clementine hardly had anything. It was also really squishy. I even felt a little air coming out. So I kind of wonder if maybe the clementine was a little older and if that will ex affect our experiment any. The lemon was super duper juicy. So was the orange and so was the grapefruit, um, which I was expecting since they're also bigger and there's a little bit more fruit in there. If you have not finished um, cutting up and juicing your fruit, one thing I did was I cut around, and you would want to have an adult do this, I cut around the fruit just to break it up a little bit once I got it open, and then I cut into it a little bit before I used my spoon, and that helped break it up a little bit more. So we are going to start with our lime, and we're going to use a tablespoon of baking uh, soda, and we're going to stick it in there, and we're going to see what happens. So if you look, I don't know if you can hear that. I hear it fizzing. Most of my fizzing is down here where there's a lot of multiple juices. We saw it bubble here a little bit. Let's scoop it off. 
use my spoon here. You can see it foaming a little bit right here. If I press it in there, you can see it foam a bit. Squeeze it, it'll foam a little bit more as some juice comes out. But the line was hard because it was so small. I think there, the size of that is going to impact our fun a little bit. So let's try the Clementine. I don't have high hopes for this Clementine. He's a sad little Clementine. He doesn't have much going on. We're going to use a little less baking soda this time. It's not a super exact experiment in that way, but it's a smaller fruit. We don't need as much. I'm going to just stick it in there and see what happens. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. What a sad little Clementine. I told you guys he'd be sad. Let's see. Let me poke around in there a little bit. Anything? Nope. Not even when I poke in there and really get some juiciness going. There's no fizz. All of the fizz is down here where the juice is. So if you're hearing fizz, it's down here where some of the juices or the other fruits have leaked out. There's no fizz or anything going on in my clementine. I wonder how that'll work for you. If you're using a clementine at home, please drop something in the comments and let me know how that went for you. Because mine was a bummer. But that's okay. We've got some cool fruit coming up. I think that spoon is toast. We'll just leave that spoon right there. All right, we are going to do our lemon next. Use some, and we're going to sprinkle it over there and see what happens. Ooh. Definitely getting a good reaction from this one. The fizzing. If you can hear the fizzing. I hope the microphone is picking it up. Pretty good. Wipe my spoon off. We'll poke around in it a little bit. Ooh, look at that. I just poked a little bit to release some of the juice and look how much it's fizzing up. We're definitely getting more of a volcano reaction from this the way we would out of like a baking soda and vinegar. It's not quite as speedy and dramatic as baking soda and vinegar would be. but that's still pretty cool. We just needed to get some of the juice in there going. Look at him. All right, only two more to go. You might have more, I don't know. There's a lot of citrus out there. You could be doing 10 citrus for all I know. All right, we're gonna do our orange next. Going in size order. I'm just gonna dump that right on in there and see what happens. He's fizzing up pretty good. We're going to poke that in there a little bit. Let some of the juices get on top of the baking soda. We're definitely getting some fizz. It's dripping down the sides. I think he's less fizzy overall, though. I think he's less fizzy than the lemon was. The lemon you guys can see has bigger bubbles it's got more air in that which means there's more of a reaction happening a baking set an acid reaction produces carbon dioxide so it produces air and that's what causes the fizz in the bubbles so this one having those big bubbles that's still going it's still kind of fizzing and oozing a little bit much more than this one we've got a little bit more baking soda now that we've got some juice on top and to see Yep, that's definitely a weaker reaction than the lemon. It might even be a weaker reaction than the lime. It's hard to tell because the lime was so small. All right, so, so far lemon is winning. I'm gonna wipe my spoon off one more time. That way I'm not cross-contaminating juices too much. We are gonna do our grapefruit. I'm gonna stir him up a little bit just to get some of that juice towards the top since it's had some time to settle. And now we're gonna add our baking soda. What do you guys think? Do you think the grapefruit's gonna be a big one? Pretty 
pretty good. Still not as good as the lemon, I would say. Better than the orange. Maybe close to the lime. Again, hard to say. It's hard to compare a grapefruit to a lime, you guys. We're going to poke in there a little bit. Get more of that. Ooh, that's got a good fizz. It's definitely reacting a little more quickly than the lemon did, but that just could be because there's more juice, more juice to be had to react with that baking soda. This is not the most precise experiment in the world. Just for fun, why not? Now we're just having fun with our fruit. All right, well, that was our experiment for today. I would say, based on the results I observed with my somewhat imprecise experiment, I would say that the lemon had the strongest reaction. We got the biggest flow from the grapefruit, again, probably because there was more juice. The orange was okay. It wasn't bad, but it was not as good as the lemon. The lime, I think, would have done better if we had tried it in a cup. It's cool to do it in the citrus um, skins, but that one probably was just too small to get a good reaction and to really gauge it. We might be better off and have a more accurate experiment if we juiced these into cups and did it. So you could try that at home if you wanted to do it that way. You could do that. You could even scoop them out, juice them, pour the juice back into the empty citrus if you really want to get fancy and do it that way. That could be fun too. And our poor little Clementine here was just not very fun. I'd say he bombed, but he didn't, and that's the problem. Well, I hope you guys have fun. I would love to hear about your experiment results. I would love to hear what um, your results were and what your observations were about my experiment or yours. And you can drop those in the comments if we have comments enabled. I don't know if the library has the comments enabled or not. Or you can send us videos or pictures of your own experiments to our Facebook page at Huntsville Madison County Public Library. Thank you, guys.